How you doing, Sam? Good, my friend. I, I see by your name, Daniel. Obviously, you come from a Christian background. Um, originally uh, non-religious. Like my parents didn't really talk to me about religion, but okay. about the age of 20, early 20s somewhere, maybe 22 or 23, I became an Orthodox Christian mm. for about two years. And then actually I left Orthodox Christianity mm. before I found out about Islam mm -hmm. and then I became a Muslim. Yeah. How old are you now? 26. Okay. So how long have you been a Muslim now? Over a year. Okay. So, all right. So you said you're an Orthodox Christian for two years and then you embrace Islam. Now let me assume, and then you can correct me. Is it because of the concept of God, Tawheed? Is that it? Well, like I said, I didn't, I didn't leave Orthodox Christianity for Islam. I left Orthodox Christianity before I learned about Islam. Mm -hmm. And the reason I left Orthodox Christianity is because it, it was multi multifaceted but i think ultimately the communion i couldn't wrap my head around that mm. like the concept that i was literally not figuratively literally eating mm -hmm. god right yeah so and and so i almost i almost felt guilty in a sense participating because you know in <clears throat> orthodox christianity <clears throat> you you do the divine liturgy yeah. and the divine liturgy ultimately is leading up to communion yep Exactly. And if I didn't believe in the communion, I, yeah, I didn't, I just, it didn't feel right. Sure. So I stopped, I stopped going. Yeah. But that's purely subjective. You felt guilty because you didn't make sense of it, but you then became Muslim because of Tawheed. Is that it? Yeah. You're asking why did I become a Muslim? Yeah. Of all the religions, just because you left Orthodox Christianity doesn't mean Islam is the default position. So why did you become Muslim? Sure. Why did I become Muslim? Well, I realized the importance, this, this just came to me one day, the importance of submitting to God. And I realized where my life was headed at the time after leaving Orthodox Christianity, you know, I was living kind of this godless life and I had a lot of problems as we all do, you know, but I was do. doing a lot of sin and, and it was becoming problematic and i realized that something that would really help me would be to submit myself to god and then actually i had a friend that was learning about islam which sure. i thought was weird and silly at the time and this friend also uh was into orthodox christianity he was an orthodox christian before as well mm -hmm. he left around the same time as me and he started learning about islam and i thought that was silly and um but then i realized why is it silly i don't really know anything about islam mm -hmm. so i started learning about it and then i realized that islam means to submit your will to God. And yeah. that was a big pivotal moment for me. And then I just, the more I learned about Islam, it, it was, it seemed extremely reasonable. It seemed like an extremely reasonable way to live your life. It seemed simple. It made sense to me. Yeah. So I, I, I took the shot. Again, because that's what you just said. Me, me, me. But just because submitting to God, mm -hmm. something that was natural to you, what makes you think submitting to all of the Quran means you're submitting to the true God? Because when I read the Quran, I don't find any uh, contradictions. There are plenty of contradictions, friend. We'll get into that. Okay. But that's subjective again. Even if you have a book that has no contradictions, that doesn't mean it's a revelation from the true God. So what makes you think the God of the Quran is a true God, the God revealed through the prophets? Also, I just want to preface this. You know, I'm not a, I'm, I'm a layman. So, you know, you, I, I'm actually hoping that you stump me today no by the way, not, you'll get some and the reason why i only came after you so now notice what you said you're not a scholar layman but you went after marmari i didn't watch the video so it's ironic for me someone who says he's a layman he's not a scholar but yet he feels confident enough to make a video criticizing marmari did so you I, watch that video no uh, just when you said he lied about it that he did lie he said he said that pigs have a hoof that is not split yeah, okay let's say and oh, for lie. the sake of charity, well, I'm going to say that your God lied about the Trinity. So if you want to be ungracious, uncharitable, <laughs> no, we'll get there. You can laugh. Right? I mean, see, we can have a serious, con you can laugh. Okay. We, we can approach things graciously and give people the benefit of the doubt that he misspoke because he doesn't know too much. Or we can impugn them with the worst motives possible. But if you're laughing at that, 
we're going to have a field day with what you believe to be the uncreated speech of God, making assertions regarding certain groups that you have no proof for. For example, I want you to give me some extra Quranic proof, historical, textual, archaeological, for the assertion of Surat al Toba, chapter 9, verse 30, that the Jews believe that Uzair is a son of Allah. Let me put it on the screen. See, when you, the same measure you use will be turned against you. So you were ungracious to him. So now you got to, now, you can't handle the heat. Don't. You said it was 930? Chapter 9, verse 30, yes. I'm going to put on. <laughs> and you want, you want proof of the, like the historical accuracy of this? Can you give me one single extra Quranic source that says the Jews viewed Uzair, the son of Allah, because it's contrasted to the Christians, Nasara, believing that the Messiah is the son of Allah. Can you name any Jewish group, apart from your biased Muslim sources, who this group is? Let me put it on the screen for everyone to see. And by the way, who is Uzair? I, I honestly have no idea. Exactly. So you embrace the religion. You really don't know. And you're of course I'm not. Of course, I'm not going to know everything about uh, no, that this it, is you know. not about everything. It's these are the basics because here the assertion is that Allah desires that the Muslims fight against all forms of idolatry, which includes the idolatry of the Jews and Christians of ascribing a son to Allah. Let me enlarge the screen. So, if you haven't read chapter nine, which is one of the final chapters according to Muslim sources, if we just go by the Quran, we don't know about the chronology of the Quran. But if I go with Muslim sources, chapter nine is one of the last, if not the last chapters that was composed in Surat Al-Bara'a, Surat al toba And here it's saying, in the context of why Allah wants to fight Jews and Christians. And the Jews say, Uzair, they say, Uzair is the son of Allah. That's what they're telling you. We don't know who Uzair is because Uzair is not the Arabic form of Ezra. And the Christians say, Messiah is the son of Allah. That is a saying from their mouths. They imitate the saying of the disbelievers of old, Allah's curse be upon them. It really says Allah fight them, but put that aside. So Allah's cursing Jews for saying that he, Allah has a son, it's Uzair. Who's Uzair? I, I, like I said, I don't know. Okay. So this is why I say, if you're going to be charitable and give people the benefit of doubt, then the same measure you use will be extended to you. But if you're going to come ungraciously and attack people and think, maybe you misspoke. We all misspeak. None of us is perfect. Yeah. And you're going to be treated the same way. But did you did you feel like when I made the video about the bishop that I was that was I was somehow like proving Christianity is no, not true? Uh, you, no, you you attacked the bishop saying he's a liar, a man who just got stabbed and he lost his right eye. So that's yeah, I, did, I didn't know. I didn't know that at the time of that's fine. making the video. So now, again, let's come back to the first issue. So you say submitting to God. Yeah, obviously. But I'm still wanting to know what makes you think Allah the Quran is a true God, especially the true God revealed through the prophets, because it mentions Jesus. And even the Arabic name for Jesus, Isa, doesn't correspond to the Arabic form of his name. But we'll get into that. So why do you think Allah of the Quran is a true God? Um, um, when In the Quran, when it says... Allah is the most gracious and most merciful when I in, intuitively, well, I guess you're going to say that's subjective. Yeah, it is. It is. It is subjective, but you're asking me, why do I think so? Isn't that? But you're doing da a dawah, right? You're trying to invite people to the way of Islam because obviously you've got a YouTube channel. So now I'm sure. a Christian. I want to yeah. know how you're going to assure me that all of the Quran is a God revealed in and through the prophets, especially Jesus Christ. So convince me, do dawah. Can't be just subjective. Well, I mean, you're a Christian, and and I I don't think. I, I I didn't really come here with the intention of trying to convert you to Islam, but if you're curious, I think if you read the the attributes of Allah, if you understand the attributes of Allah, I do. Then I think you would logically come to the conclusion that that is God. No, not at all. There are attributes of Allah. Okay that do not befit the attributes as outlined in the scriptures, the Bible, and revealed in Jesus. For example, I'll just give you the most basic. By the way, sure. what am I saying? Because in chapter 16, verse 125 of the Quran, this is an exhortation to you. You believe in the Quran, I don't. Now, if you mm -hmm. don't want Ali Khan, I can go to another translation. What translation do you prefer? Um, usually, if I read a translation, I read multiple. Uh, Sahih or okay. Sahih and Noble Quran. 
Who was that? No, book I don't know. Anyway, no book. I can't remember the name. Well, yeah. Kalali Khan, they're, they're Salafi Muslims. I don't know if you embrace. Uh, that's another. I thing. think I think Kalali is uh is actually noble noble Quran. Yeah, okay, so. so that's yeah. uh, Salafi. So from my understanding, then uh, I know you're going to say you're Muslim, but that's not sufficient <laughs> because just like in Christianity, you had Orthodox Christianity, Catholicism, in Islam you'll have Sunni Islam, Shia Islam, and then in Sunni Islam you have Salafi Islam, then you have hmm. Ashari, Maturidi. What are you? Are you Salafi? I can't say because I I don't know enough about it, but I find like I've I've researched uh, like. Fiqh, and in terms of fiqh, I typically find what Salafis say makes sense, but I haven't okay. learned enough about like the Akita and this kind of stuff. I, so, I really don't know. But you, you, do you, would you agree with them about Allah's sifat, his attributes, such as his foot and his shin and his eyes? Or are you see that that ties in with Akita? And I, like I said, okay. I, I honestly, I don't know. All right, so you're learning as you go along. All right, but here's what the verse tells you to do <laughs> invite. Now, they add stuff in parentheses, mankind, O Muhammad, to the way of your Lord. Invite them with wisdom. And then it, this is the parentheses, not part of the air. Okay. And fair preaching, with wisdom, fair preaching, and argue with them in a way that is better. So obviously, you're going to do dawah until you don't do it. So, if, okay, well, my efforts are not working with this guy. You move on. But you're supposed to do this just like I'm supposed to mm -hmm. preach the gospel. Your Lord knows best who has gone astray from his path. He is the best aware of those who are guided. But the most okay. basic, fundamental aspect of god outlined in the old testament new testament is that god is a spiritual father not a physical father who procreates sexually because that's blasphemous to the jews and the christians he's a spiritual father who has spiritual children and he's particularly the father of jesus christ is your god allah your father is he my father yeah is he the father of the ummah the father of muhammad the father of muslims Mm, I would say in a in a literal biological sense, of course, no. That's not what I asked, because no Jew or Christian believes that Allah, if you want to use the term Allah, which you believe is the God of the Christians, is mm. a biological father. They believe that God is a spiritual being. So he has spiritual children who are born of his spiritual word, born of his spirit. So he's a spiritual father. So is Allah your father spiritually? But doesn't it say in the Bible that we're children of God? So in a sense... Yeah, but that's not the Quran. That's my point. But you just said Christians don't believe that we're the, that God is a father. No, but this is recorded. See, if you can't hear me well, then I suspect sure. you understand the Quran and the Bible. No, that's not what I said. It's recorded. I said no Christian or Jew believes God is a physical being who sires children biologically, procreatively. I said he's a spiritual father. I was very plain and clear. Okay. So in the Bible, when it says we're children of God, it means in a spiritual sense, right? Because he's not a physical being who has sex. But is Allah sure. your spiritual father? I'm still waiting for the answer. Spiritual? No, I would have no reason to say that Allah is my spiritual father. No. No, he isn't. Because the Quran denies. When the Jews came to your prophet, Surah Al-Maidah, chapter 5, verse 18, and the Jews and Christians say, we are the children of Allah. There was no Jew or Christian at the time of Muhammad that thought Allah sired them biologically physical procreation they meant it spiritually and i'll prove that from the scriptures of the jews and the christians and his loved ones and then the responses say why then does he punish you for your sins nay you are but human beings of those who has created he forgives whom he wills and he punishes whom he wills and to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and all that is between them and to him is the return of all now the highest relationship you can have with your god is this chapter 19 surat al maryam chapter 19 88 to 93 and they say the most beneficent has begotten a son or offspring or children. Now, remember, parentheses, brackets, that's not in the Arabic. So I can, right. or, or we can read them. As the Jews say, Uzair is the son of Allah. And the Christians say that he's begotten a son, Isa. And the pagan Arabs say that he has begotten daughters. That's their comment. Indeed, you brought forth a terrible evil thing, whereby the heavens are almost torn and the earth is split asunder and the mountains fall in ruins that they ascribe a son or offspring or children to the most beneficent Allah. But it is not suitable for the majesty of the most beneficent that he should beget a son or offspring or children. There's none in the heavens and the earth but comes unto the most beneficent as a slave. So right here, you're told, all you are is a slave and he is your master. Sure. That's not the God of the Bible. Okay. The God of the Bible says, he is a father to his people, both Old and New Testaments. Here, I'm going to show it to you. All right. 
and I'm going to show it to you from the New Testament. So this is a fundamental characteristic that is lacking in the Islamic God. So I'm going to now put it on the screen so people can see I'm not lying. I know you know I'm not lying. And let me show you what Jesus says. If all you are is a slave. Okay. Exodus 4, 22 to 23. Then you say to Pharaoh, thus says Yahweh, Israel's my son, my firstborn. Israel's my son, my firstborn. So I said to you, let my son go that he may serve me. But you have refused to let him go. Behold, I will kill your son, your firstborn. Deuteronomy 14, verse 1. You are the sons of Yahweh your God. You shall not gash yourselves nor shave your forehead for the sake of the dead. John 1, 12 to 13. Now we go in the New Testament. I was Old Testament. I'll give you a few more from Old Testament. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. So if you believe in Christ, you become a child of God, who were born not of blood, see it's not biological, nor the will of the flesh, it's not sexual, nor the will of the man, but of God. And then Jesus says, if all you are a slave, so that, it's all that you are, you have no permanent place in God's house. John 8, 30 to 36. John 8. 30 to 36, as he was speaking these things, many believed in him. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed in <clears throat> believed him, if you abide in my word, then you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered, and we are Abraham's seed, and have never yet been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you, you will become free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. And the slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does remain forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. So how is Allah of the Quran, the same God, spoken of I, the Old Testament and Jesus? Sorry, can you repeat that question? Okay, how is it, in light of what I just showed you, two different scriptures, Old Testament, mm -hmm. which the Jews believe and the Christians accept because of Jesus, and the New Testament. And one consistent teaching is God is a father to his people. Your God is a father to no one. How can they be the same God? Before you comment, just give you more verses. Here's another prophet, Isaiah. Isaiah 63, 16. For you are our father, though Abraham does not know us, and Israel does not recognize us. You, O Yahweh, are our father. Our redeemer from everlasting is your name. Again, Isaiah 64. I can give you more, but anyway. But now, O Yahweh, you are our father. We are the clay. You are part of Potter, and all of us are the work of your hand. So why did you submit to all of the Quran if you're thinking you're serving the God of Abraham? I ne I never claimed that um, Allah is the God of the Bible. The the Quran claims it. Does it? Yeah, it says that the same Allah sent down the Quran, sent down the scriptures after the Injil, which you know that the. the you sure about that? You yeah, don't want Arabic to is Injil, right? Yeah, but you don't want to go there assuming that the Injil is not the New Testament. I promise you don't want to go there. Because okay, we, 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 we can if you want to. We can. Okay, now you said the Injil. That sounds interesting. Okay, here. Let's yeah. do it. Okay, well, let's, let me show you. Let's go to the Injil. And then what is the Torah according to you? That the Quran mentions. Revelation given to Musa. Okay, I'm going to give you $100,000. And I'll have everyone take shahada. If you can show me in the Quran, it says the Torah was given to Musa in the Quran. I told you you don't want to go there, but you insisted. I'll give you $100,000, which I don't have. And everyone who's going to become Muslim, show me a single verse says, and we gave the Torah to Musa. Don't show me a verse where it says we gave Musa the kitab, the book. Kitab is not the same as Torah. And even okay. in Islamic sources, the Salaf, Salih, said that the word Torah doesn't just mean the books of Moses. It refers to the scriptures of the two, the two scriptures of the people of the book. So where'd you get that the Torah was given to Moses? Can you show me the verse in the Quran? Not off the top of my head, no. It's not there. Okay. I'm telling you, and I'm going to prove it to you. It's not there, but I don't know why it doesn't come. So, you, so, you, so you think that when the, when the Quran says Torah, it's referring literally to the Old Testament? I'm not saying that your Muslim translators admit this because I'm going to quote them in a minute. So that's why you don't know much. You just came into the faith. You're green. Hopefully, by the grace of God, you're going to end up leaving. But before I do that, here, let's go with Injil because it's singular, not an Injil. Never heard that one before. 
All right, let's read. Surat Al-Maida 546 to 47. And in our footsteps, we sent Isa, son of Maryam, confirming the Torah. And we gave him the Injil, in which was guidance and light, and a confirmation of Torah that had come before it, a guidance and admonition for al mutaqun But then it says, watch verse 47. So here's my question to you. Now Muhammad is addressing his contemporaries. Let the people of the gospel, Ahl al-Injil, judge by what Allah has revealed therein. What did they have at the time of Muhammad? How are you going to Let judge the people. if you don't have it at the time of Because it's saying, look, Jesus came with the gospel. You people of the gospel judge by it. Judge by what? I don't know. Yeah, because the Muslims who taught you didn't teach you well. So you have to learn on your own. I know, because I've been there, done that. Because they try to convert me too in the 90s. But the Lord of God, he saved me. So when you say the Injil is... Whatever it is, it's not the New Testament. How do you know that? When here it says, whatever the Injil is, it was at the time of Muhammad, the Christians had it. And if you want more proof, here, 7157, Hilali Khan, they're now going to identify the Injil for you. Watch. They're going to do it, not me. Those who follow the messenger, the prophet, who can neither read nor write, right, whom they find written with them, it's with them in the Torah and the Injil. And what did they identify the Injil here as? What's the Injil here? They gave it to you in Prophet. I don't know. What is, what is that? That's a Bible verse. What is that that's verse? John. See, that's why you got to read the Bible. John 14, verse 16. So I thought, hold on. And this is the Halali? Yeah, Halali Khan. Halali Khan translation. That's what I'm using right here. Halali Khan here. So in case well, okay. Hold on. Halali Khan, you see it? Right here, Halali Khan? Boom. Sure. And right here? So they're telling you this prophecy of this unlettered prophet is in the Injil. And they say, well, that's the gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 16. So wait, didn't you try to somehow deny that, that the gospel is not what I have? It's not the New Testament? How do you know that? What is, what is, what is that, 616? Chapter 14, verse 16. This is Roman numeral 10, 1. Okay, right. I means 14, verse 16. Right. It's prophecy of the paraclete. And here, Deuteronomy 18.15, a prophet like Moses. But my point is, they're telling me that the gospel that's with the Christians Christians, is the gospel of John. Why did they tell me that? I don't know. You have to ask them. I mean, it's, it, you know it's not in the Arabic, so it's not no, really. Yeah. No, because they're, they realize that the Quran is not a fraud, which you're trying to accuse it of. Whatever the gospel is, it was there at their at their possession. So historically, so did you did you just say I was trying to say that the Quran is a fraud? No. If you do not answer, then you're accusing the Quran of fraud because the Quran is saying the gospel is there at the time of Muhammad. So they're being faithful to history and saying, well, hold on. Historically, the only gospel the Christians have is the New Testament scripture. So forget them. What did they have at the time of Muhammad? I'm still waiting for your answer. Well, okay. So the verse says, "Let the people of the." gospel judged by what Allah has revealed therein therein what I mean that does that necessarily imply that they that they have and the so what are they going to judge the untouched by? gospel or the what are they the going to judge by read the context context is 46 47 the, the injil how are they going to judge by an injil if they don't have it They may not. I don't. I don't know. So your God is telling them, judge by it. How? Right. Hold on, Allah, wait, Allah, wait. We don't have it. Remember, you're not answering the. Question. I mean, maybe they, maybe they have uh, part of it. And what does it say they have part of it here? I'm just Are saying that's a possibility. Adding to the Quran, which you're condemned for doing. I'm, saying, I'm just saying that's a possibility. Wouldn't, couldn't that be a possibility that they well they have part of it, but they don't. Anything have can it. be possible. It's even possible that Muhammad was a Hindu. What's possible doesn't make it probable. I want you to help me identify what the gospel is at the time of Jesus. Uh, Muhammad, I'm sorry. I'm still waiting, man. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to get back to you on it. Okay. I don't know. And then here it says, those who follow the messenger prophet who can neither read nor write, whom they find written with them in the Torah and the Angel. So again, it's talking about time Muhammad, they had to turn the gospel. So help me understand what gospel did they have at the time Muhammad where Muslims could say, hey, Muhammad is there in your gospel. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, like I said, I have to get back to you. I don't well, that's know. what I'm saying. Don't come to me and say untainted gospel because I know you bought the Dawah script. The scriptures are corrupt. The Quran nowhere says they're corrupt. It says they're perfectly preserved. I know the verses that they've taught you. Surat al-Baqarah, 275, 279, 378, 548. None of that proves their point because I've debated that issue. But put that aside. I want to again ask you, what made you think that the God of the Quran is the same God of the prophets mentioned in the scriptures? Because it talks about the prophets who are given scriptures before Muhammad and Muhammad comes in their succession. And it's supposed to be the same God. How is it the same God? I don't, I'm not sure it is. The, the script, I don't, I don't think we have enough evidence to prove that the scriptures we have today are this have, have been preserved. Well, that means the Quran is now bearing false witness because it says they have been preserved. But if you're going does back, it? Out, yeah, it does. Oh, verse after verse. After can verse. we look at that? Oh, sure. My pleasure. Here you go. I have articles, but I'm going to show it to you. So then if you're consistent, you have no proof that your Quran is perfectly preserved because the manuscripts and your tradition say the Quran is corrupted. You don't even have one Arabic version of the Quran. You have various qira'at, and they're missing surahs. That's according to your Islamic sources. So I'm still wondering why you're a Muslim. But hold on. We'll get there. Let me just go there. We'll get there. One second. So the, for the reasons for you to become a Muslim are not sound. And the reasons for you rejecting Christianity are not sound either. But be that as it may. Hold on, brother. Let me just line it up for you so that, you know. 240 to 44. 240 to 44. Let me show it right here. O children of Israel, remember my favor which I bestowed upon you and fulfill your obligations to my covenant so that I fulfill my obligations to your covenant. Now remember, the comments in parentheses, brackets are not part of the Arabic, but put that aside. And fear none but me. And believe in what I have sent down, this Quran, confirming that which is with you. Present tense. He's talking to his audience. This confirms what is with you. And then they tell you, we can ignore it. The Torah and the Injil is with you. And the Quran confirms what you have, not opposes them, say they're corrupt. And be not the first to disbelieve therein. And by not, by not with my verses, Torah and the Injil, a small price of getting a small gain by selling my verses and fear me and fear me alone. And mix not truth with falsehood, nor conceal the truth. And they put in parentheses Muhammad, his qualities in the gospel. While you know, you know the truth. Now, real quickly before I finish it, it says, do not conceal the truth while you know the truth. If you don't have the truth, can you conceal it? No. But then here it says, they're concealing the truth. So that means they must have it, right? Right. Okay. Just want you to keep in mind. Don't forget what you're telling me. And perform a salah. And give zakat and irqa. They have to always give Arabic words. Along with <laughs> al raqiyun. What is it? Now 44. Enjoin you al birr Piety and righteousness and every act of disobedience on Allah. And then when you forget to practice it yourselves while you recite the scripture. Okay, before I move on, because I want you to pay attention. They're reciting the scripture. They have the truth though they conceal it and the quran confirms what they already have not what they used to have what you have now how are they going to mm -hmm. recite the scripture conceal the truth and why would the quran confirm what they have if you are correct their scriptures are corrupt and not reliable well just because they're corrupt doesn't mean that they can't contain the truth and i don't see anything so far That's saying that sense. this is now the third time you interpret the quran for me, and it doesn't say what you say, because the verb confirm, sadaqa, means to bear witness to the veracity and the honesty and the truthfulness of a thing or person. That's mm -hmm. where you get Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, sadaqa. Why is the Quran not reading the way you're interpreting it? Well, you're also interpreting it when you're reading it, saying that it's... No, I'm just telling you what's in front of me. Here, can you show me where it says, confirming only parts of what you have, or did it say confirming that which is with you? Can you show me who's reading it as it appears and who's interpreting it? it but it also doesn't say confirming all of that which is with you. So if I show you where 
It says John the Baptist confirms a word from Allah, but it doesn't say it confirms all of Allah's words. So your logic means he only confirms a part of it? Yeah, that's a possibility, yeah. Logically. Then that means you just said that John didn't bear witness to Jesus being fully reliable, and you just blaspheme, and you're a kafir. See? Think before you speak. Yes. Can you repeat again? Okay. You just ended up committing kufr because the verb sadaqa, chapter 3, verse 9, says Yahya confirms a word from Allah. And I said, so that doesn't mean he confirms all of it. You go, yeah, that's possible. But the word of Allah is Jesus. So are you saying that John is saying, yeah, there are some things about Jesus that are right, but there may be some things about him that are not right? Think before you both, speak. Both are, both are possible. He could be confirming part or he could be confirming How all can he it. be confirming only a part of Jesus and his mission? I'm not saying he was. I'm just saying yeah. grammatically that No, awesome. not at all. The burden of proof is on you to show it's only confirming a part of it. Where? Don't make I didn't suit. say. I didn't say. I didn't say that. He's only confirming a part of it. I'm saying grammatically. That Where in the grammar? Show it to me. That it means only a part, not all of it. I'm waiting. Mm, I'd have to give you a separate example to, for it to make you can sense. Give me an example. Can you give me any Arabic lexicons or even a lexicon oh. on the Zedekah? Can you give me anything or you're just Ipse Dixit? What are you talking about, Zedekah? Why did you mention that? Because the word here is sadaqa. Sadaqa. Oh, confirming? Musaddiq. Musaddiqoon. Like Abu Bakr Saddiq. Or when you give sadaqa. All right. So but let's go. I mean, I mean, if you have a, if you have a, say, if you have a yeah. collection of facts and some of them are true and some of them are not true. And then I tell somebody, yeah, I, I agree with what he says. That doesn't mean I agree with everything that you say. No, you could still if you say don't qualify it, I would take it to mean you agree with everything I say. No, you're wrong. You would have to qualify your statement. You're I wouldn't wrong. have to. I wouldn't have to, though. Yes, you would. If you say, so. I agree with what he says, and you full stop, then you're going to leave me with the impression that what he says, you have no fault with it. Give me a better I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, another example. Yeah, that, yeah that's I, a problem. I it's, it's based a on a little bit on the spot. Let me give me give me a second to, to try and think of another example. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. You need to shut down your YouTube channel, brother. You have no business talking about the Quran or the Bible, honestly. Now, as you're thinking about coming up with some examples to tap dance here, at chapter two. I don't. I don't think I need to give another example. I. I think I've already said what I. Yeah. Sorry. Well, let's. What I think. What I said makes sense. I think so. We can agree. Yeah, because you're disagree. the standard again. It didn't feel right to me. This made sense to me because you are God and the standard of truth. Yeah, we got that already. But I'm just gonna let the Quran show you that you're not the standard, and even as a Muslim, Allah is your standard. But even here, you have to negotiate with Allah and tell Allah He could have said it in a better way. Well, that's. You okay, know. okay, okay, okay. Imagine, um, okay, can we read to explain it like this? Before you give me your uh, spiel, let's read the Quran 289. When there came to them, the Jews, a book from Allah confirming what is with them. Now, let's follow your logic. Here, the Quran is saying the proof for the Jews and the Christians that the Quran is from God is that the Quran is going to confirm part of their scripture, but not all of it. And you think the Jews are going to now be convinced? Oh, oh, thank you. Now we know you're from, from God. Because you're saying only part of our scripture is intact. The other is corrupt. And that's going to make us believe you're a prophet. That's the argument of this passage. Hey, can I, can I ask you this before we move on? Go ahead, yeah. Say you, have a, say you have a book and it contains the truth, but it also contains some things that aren't true. Do you have the truth or not? Not if you don't qualify what you mean. What do you mean I have the truth? If you have a book that has truth but also has some falsehood, do you do have the truth or not? No, Say you're what? asking one question. How do I know it has falsehood in it? How do you know what has yeah, falsehood in it? Your analogy for it to be valid means that I have to know in advance this book is not completely true. So now, no, I'm saying, I'm saying hypothetically, if you have a book, I, could, I can't answer hypothetical because if you're telling me. All that right. this is analogous to the Quran, then the Quran would have to tell me somewhere, hey, these scriptures are not fully reliable for your analogy to be valid and you're not getting it. Where does the Quran say that? Well, it contradicts the, the, the Bible. So That's the reason why Muhammad is a fraud. You just put the cart before the horse. Thank you. Now you see the dilemma. 
So it's by con I mean by by the Quran saying that it's true and then also contradicting the yeah the because New Muhammad Testament was an ignoramus means, he wasn't a prophet what are you not getting that's the proof he's a fraud that would only that would only be true if the Quran says that the Old and New Testament are a hundred percent true which it never says no it says, it says that it contains truth proof. it says that it has hey, truth but it doesn't say that it's it, you don't shift the burn of proof and stop lying give me those verses what you just said show it I, to me. Show it to me. I, I, I think any, anybody anybody with logic understands what I'm saying. Okay, let's try this you again. Can agree to disagree on that. Let's on try that this again. But let me okay. get back to you. I don't. I I want to. I want to look at the Arabic of all this because I've actually can I never thought Arabic? about this. I'll give you the Arabic. Can you read it? No, but I, I mean I can do like oh, a word wait, for wait, word. Wait, I can on, also ask people. Hold on. Wait, wait. You just said I want to look at the Arabic. So right. I want to give you the Arabic. I want you to read it. But you don't know how to read Arabic. How many excuses do you have? I mean, I want to. I want to learn the Arabic and and okay. and. I'm not saying you know it. since this is getting nowhere because you're the standard and you keep assuming what you have to prove and you haven't proved anything. Now I want to know as a Sunni Muslim, you don't just follow the Quran only, right? Yeah, there's also Sahih Hadith. Sahih, okay. So do you believe the Quran is the uncreated speech of Allah? The uncreated speech of you're Allah. Sunni, right? I I don't know. I can't give you an answer there. Man, dude, honestly. You you embrace the religion and you're so completely ignorant of it and you left orthodoxy because of your subject experience how much of the new testament you knew before you left the orthodox faith i i don't know can you give you an answer so how much of it do i know what do you mean by no i mean did you I, even I read bother it. for those two years to study the gospels matthew mark yeah I did, I did study i i was i was mark. actually close to uh joining seminary i was taking seminary classes mm -hmm. and how much of the gospels did you read and understand I can't. I can't give you an exact number. I mean, a, a good no. amount. Dude, how I, understood, much I understood the faith. I feel like. Say what? Did you? All right. So let me see how much you understood. So you left orthodoxy because you didn't. You felt that you know eating the flesh of God, drinking. Oh, that was yeah, okay. All right. But kissing a black stone, that's okay. We'll get to that. Now, you don't have to kiss a black stone in Islam. Uh, you want to bet it's Sunnah. Your prophet said you have to. And just because something Sunnah doesn't mean you have to. Okay, so when you he perform, said you have to. Is that, yeah, is that when you perform Hajj. What did your prophet say if you're able to do what with the black stone? I don't know. Oh my goodness, here we go. Again. Okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. Don't change the subject. All I right, tried so, to I tried to tell you I'm not, I'm not super knowledgeable. But. So why you have a YouTube channel critiquing people? I mean, that was you got to watch that video. That one was crazy. Okay, why I mean, are you was... critiquing people? You're not knowledgeable. You don't know because, much. Because I care, no, because I care about the truth. And I think when somebody... What truth? You don't even know the truth. You're lost. You're confused. I, I don't feel like that. But if you're, you're proving it if by you your answers. Okay. I don't know this. I don't know that. Well, I don't know. Yeah, you're asking, me, you're asking me really quite complicated uh, questions. Well, you asked me to stump you. You want me to uh, throw you curveballs? Yeah, I'm, I'm not complaining. It's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to write it all down. I'll go find yeah, answers. You can go watch it's it. Come, come back. We'll have a round two. But before we do sure. that... But you don't even know if the Quran is uncreated, so I don't even know how to proceed because you don't even know if the Quran is uncreated. And yet the you're Quran Sunni. is uncreated? Yes. Part of the Sunni tradition, you're not Shia, you're not Quran only, is that the Quran is uncreated. The Quran is uncreated. Quran is uncreated? I don't even oh understand why, how that makes sense. Because or... it's supposed to be... There we go. I don't understand. My God, have mercy on you. Bring you out of your darkness here. Okay. Oh, I, don't, I don't know what that means. The Quran is uncreated. It means the Quran is not a created entity because it's a speech of Allah. And because it's right. a speech of Allah, it's one of his attributes and it's uncreated. I guess I got to show you. That's like philosophy. No, it isn't. It's Ahl al-Sunnah wa Jama'ah. It's the tradition of Sunni Islam based on narrations attributed to Muhammad. See again, you just said something. Okay. All right. Okay. So can you, yeah, I'm going to show you. Can it go ahead. Me. Tell me what is the problem with it being uncreated? You don't know what the problem is with being uncreated. Okay. Hold on. Let me just get you some <laughs> online source. You're laughing. I don't know what you're laughing at because it's going to be embarrassing. Just be patient. I just want to get an online source. Uh, let's see where I can find it. Okay. Now the Quran is supposed to be the uncreated speech of Allah because it is one of his attributes and none of Allah's attributes are created none of them so if the Quran is kalam Allah kalam meaning speech of Allah word of Allah it cannot be created so the Quran is uncreated 
But do you believe the Quran is Allah? The Quran is Allah, and it. Is the Quran Allah? I mean, it depends on the, what what sense you mean when you say is. Like so you, you can say that I I am uh, generous, but that doesn't mean I'm synonymous with so generous. How, so Allah is a predication. Allah is an attribute, per, characteristic, like, or is Allah being? No, you said the Quran. Yeah, but you didn't hear your own analogy, brother. Pay attention to your analogy. Listen to what you said. I am generous. Well, generous is a predication. It's a quality. So when I say is the Quran Allah, you just made Allah a predication. Is Allah a predication? I thought you said is Allah the Quran. No, I said is okay. the Quran Allah. Is the Quran Allah. Yeah. I mean, in a literal sense, no, of course not. So it's not Allah, and yet it's uncreated? It's... <laughs> say, say again. You're laughing. I don't know what the hell you're laughing at. Dude. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to understand it. It's here it goes. Here's a hadith right here. Here you go. Sahih. You see it right here on the screen. Here you go. I just found it for you. Here. Do you see it on the screen? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Now I'm going to put it in private chat for you. This is Sunnah.com. This is not almost. This is not a Christian website. So now Quran is uncreated. Okay. You see it, right. Abu Dawood. Yeah. This is proof of the fact the Quran is is not created. It's not okay. created. Okay. So. My question to you is, if the Quran is uncreated and it's not Allah, right? Yeah, I get it. So, okay. how many uncreated things do you have? How many uncreated things? You just said, brother, follow yourself. My brother in humanity. Yeah. You're, say, you're saying that there, there, can't be, there shouldn't be anything uncreated besides God, right? Well, that's what and you if the, said. If the Quran is uncreated. Okay, I, I see your point. Okay, yeah, so I don't have I don't have an answer for that. I don't right, have to get back to you. That's good because why I'm doing this is when you study whatever argument he has against the Trinity, if you had any, it's going to be used against your belief as a Sunni Muslim. So either you're gonna have to abandon Islam and Christianity altogether, or you're gonna have to stop thinking that the Trinity is incompatible with God's unity. This is what I'm trying to show you. Are you aware that your Sunni traditions teach that the Quran actually speaks to Allah? And will appear on the day of judgment interceding for you am i sorry i was are you aware that your sunni tradition your authentic whether it's sahih or hassan good tradition teach that the quran will appear on the day of judgment speaking to allah and will intercede for you with allah so the speech of allah will intercede yeah, you're seeing the problem. Good. If for I, me with I, Allah. Yep. You are. This is the light switch went on. <laughs> I don't see. I don't see what's problematic with that. You don't have a problem with the Quran, which is supposed to be the speech of Allah. Yeah. Talking with Allah. So is that Allah speaking to himself? I thought that's a speech. Yeah. Well, what's the problem with Allah speaking to himself? <laughs> Good. I'm glad. I like that. So Allah now appears in a different mode. It appears as the Quran. So you just made the Quran identical with Allah. Good. Excellent. Keep going. I made the Quran identical with Yes, because he you just said, what's the problem with Allah speaking to himself? So if the Quran is speaking to Allah, and that's Allah speaking to himself, that means the Quran is Allah speaking to Allah. You didn't hear yourself? What's wrong with that? Oh, so okay. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying you're okay with it. That's so good. So I just want you to hear what you. It's recorded. You can laugh, Daniel. I man, I'll laugh with you, brother. I'm I'm I'm, I'm generous. So notice what you <laughs> said. See, good. I'm glad we can laugh. We'll laugh together, brothers and mm -hmm. humanity. So the Quran will speak to Allah, and that's Allah's speech, which means Allah speaking to Himself. And you go, yeah, I have no problem with that. Okay. Well, I, I don't know if we have to say it's Allah speaking to Himself. Actually, I mean, it's but it's a it's speech. Interceding. Yeah. So Allah's it's... interceding with himself. Let's go with interceding. Allah's interceding with himself? No, his speech is interceding for you. Yeah, but the Quran is a speech, so it's now separate from Allah. So you have now 200 created things? Yeah, we're back to the... Un the I, I wrote down here, how is the Quran uncreated? I, I don't know the answer. I'm going to have to All right. look that up. So what's my point? You don't have pure monotheism you have an idea of god that it's very complex and it's similar to not identical with 
Trin Trinitarianism. So whatever Muslims tell you about the Trinity, either they're ignorant of their own tradition or they're dishonest because your view of Allah is much more complex than saying it's simple. Because that's what you told me earlier. Oh, it's very simple. No, it's not. Two mm -hmm. So what's your problem with the Trinity then? Because I'm assuming you left the Trinity too because it didn't make sense to you? Um, the Trinity... Yeah, I don't understand. I, I thought the Trinity made sense to me once before as a Muslim, actually. But then I realized that because I because I, I had the this idea about the attributes and like, like I mentioned to you earlier, I am uh, say I'm generous and I am a father and I'm all these different things. But that doesn't mean that those things are me. But then I realized those are attributes and the Trinity is actually uh, persons. Well, not right? the Quran. The Quran is a person because it's going to speak to Allah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about all that, but you're asking me about the Trinity. Yeah, yeah I don't, I'm saying I don't, whatever I don't reason you had for rejecting the Trinity means now you got to reject Islam. Because the Quran is uncreated? No, because the Quran speaks to Allah. So an attribute is going to talk to Allah. So you have a problem with three persons being one God, but you don't have a problem with an attribute speaking to Allah. So this attribute is a living attribute that can speak. And you're okay with that? I never said that the Quran was an attribute. The Muslim said it, it is the speech of Allah. Kalam Allah. We, we got to go back to that again? Your speech is an attribute of you? The Muslims say it's his attribute. You're arguing with me? You want me to give you the Muslims here? Let me show I'll have, I'll have you talk to the Muslim scholars. Hey, dude, why are you saying it's Kalam Allah? Kalam is one of the speeches, uh, attributes of Allah. They're saying it, not me. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand what, what your argument is. No, I'm, I want to understand what the Muslim argument because they baffled me. The Quran is the speech of Allah. It's an attribute. If it's an attribute, yet it speaks to Allah. So you have talking attributes? It's one of the sifat of Allah? I don't know. So so you're saying that the Quran, what, Quran is an, is an attribute? Uh, you keep saying I'm saying it. The Muslims keep it. Okay, yeah, right. You're saying, you're saying that Muslims say that the Quran yes. is an attribute, which is problematic. Because, because because listen to your argument, not mine. You said, well, you know, Allah has attributes, so I can understand I can have attributes. But if you have persons that are distinct, mm -hmm. then I can't understand how can that be one God. Well, yours is worse. You have an attribute that will speak with God, argue with God, and appear before God, but you're still okay with God being one. So you're okay with attributes speaking then? Yeah, I, I actually don't follow, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, that's all right. Here it's it is. Pretty comp it's pretty well, complicated. Here you, here you go, right here. I want to show it to you because it's complicated because you jumped into religion without knowing it. But here you go. Right here, Islam QA. Let's see what they say. Islam QA, this is a prominent Salafi website. It's the best I can get you because I don't have the hard copies of uh, at tahawi or Ibn Taymiyyah. This is easy. It's right here. Look, question. I know that the Quran is one of the attributes of Allah. Say like his eye, his hand, and so on. One of the attributes of Allah. So here it is for you, right here in the comment section. So then I send it to you in private. You see it on the screen? Yeah, and the, the person. Okay, the well, person what's your answer? Go ahead. Okay, you're gonna see. Do they agree with him? Yes. Okay. And and that it is the word of Allah in a real sense that was sent down to the Prophet through Jibreel, and that the Quran is not created. But what is meant by that? Does that mean the words of Allah are not created? Even when we read them, although we are created by Allah and everything we say or do is part of the creation of Allah. Now watch. Here's the answer. The Quran is the word of Allah and is not created. So they're agreeing. Yes, it's the word of Allah. It's not created. It's one of them. Okay. What is meant by that is that Allah spoke the words of the Quran, which Jibreel heard from him, brought it down to the prophet and conveyed it to him. All of the attributes of Allah are uncreated. They are eternal with no beginning. The words of Allah are among these attributes, and that includes the Quran. So do I need to repeat myself that the Quran is an attribute of Allah? Or you're getting it from the horse's mouth. Therefore, the scholar said that the Quran is not created because it is the words of Allah and that it is one of his attributes. So do I need okay. to repeat that again, or you got it now? Okay. Yeah, I got it. Okay.